At the end of this video, you will be able to run a Flutter application on your Mac. Also, this Mac has been factory reset. So we will install Flutter from absolute scratch. So the first step is to go on the Flutter website. You can click on this and next you can click on get started and then you will click Mac OS and recommended iOS. So this is the official documentation to install Flutter, but they have added a lot of bullshit. So I created on my website, if you go inside blog, you will find a section called install Flutter for Mac. And this is a more comprehensive guide on how to install Flutter. So for the rest of this installation, we will follow this guide. All right, so the first step is to install Flutter. For this, we will need to verify our shell configuration. And you can do this by running this command inside your terminal. So I will copy this and I will open the terminal and then I will paste this command inside and enter. You see the answer is bin ZSH. And this is what we want. The command should print the following in response. Perfect. So if you have this, you can skip the remaining step. Otherwise, you can follow step two and step three in order to have access to the ZSH. The next step will be to install Rosetta 2 only if you have an Apple chip. If you don't know how to check, you can go on the About This Mac like this, and the chip, you have this one. So I have the Apple chip, but you can have the Intel chip. So if you have the Intel chip, you don't need this, but if you have the Apple chip, you will need to copy this line of code, go in the terminal and paste it. And now you will have access to Rosetta. You just need to put your password and press enter. Perfect. Okay, so now the next step is to download the Flutter SDK. For this, we will need to go on the official website. So if you scroll down, you should find a section download and install and then you will select the download either for your apple silicon chip or intel chip so i will select this one and it's currently downloading so while this is downloading i will go back in the tutorial we have the next step is to create a folder where you can install flutter so i will go inside my finder and inside my finder i will go inside documents inside documents i will press command up and command up once again so you can see that this is my home folder so i will take this and move it on the side so i have access anytime i will go inside and then i will create a new folder call development okay so now flutter has finished to download so i will click on the folder right there and i have it so i will press again command up and find the folder and because it's not zipped i can just drag and drop it inside the development folder that we created perfect so now we have flutter inside a development folder in our computer but we need also to put the path to connect Flutter with our computer. So to tell the Mac that Flutter is at this place, this location. So we need to create a path. And this path will be on a file called the ZSH environment file. And if you don't have it, you will need to create one. So I will go inside my documents, inside the section MacBook, which is the home of your computer. And then you will press command shift dot. This will show you the hidden files. You can see on my computer, I don't have the .zsh environment. So I will copy this file and then I will paste it. I will rename this for .zsh and like this, press enter. And the next thing to do is to put a command line inside this file. So we will scroll down and the command line is this one. So we'll take this, copy, go inside my folders, enter inside the ZSH environment file, and I will replace what is inside. I will put the export of this entire path. Just make sure that you have the exact path. We created inside the MacBook, the development folder, which is called development. And inside we have the flutter. And then inside we have the bin. So you need to have the exact path. Perfect. So now we can save the file and close it. Now the next thing to do is to open the terminal. We will close this one because we want to open a new one. I will maximize this and you will write Flutter Doctor. This should show you something. So you can see that the path has been successfully connected. But if you don't have anything like this, your path is not working. So on the following step, what we'll do is we will install Android Studio, we will install Xcode, we will also install Visual Studio Code. And our goal is to fix all these errors to see all those little green check marks. So I can see the Chrome develop on the web is a little one. Probably you already have Chrome, but I will download Chrome right now. As I told you, I completely restart this computer. So I need to reinstall everything inside. Perfect. So Chrome has been installed. So I will re run the flutter doctor command and now you see that we have the green check mark nearby the chrome so we will fix step by step everything until everything is checked with the green mark okay so let's keep going on the tutorial the next step will be to install xcode so we will go inside our apple store and then we will write xcode then you will click 
download and you will click get so this will take maybe five to ten minutes to download perfect so now we can click on open we will agree the blah 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 put the password and enter so at this point make sure that you click this thing also because we want the mac os and the ios we need to have the simulator for working with flutter so make sure to have both of them checked. And then you will say download and install. Then you will click on relaunch Xcode. Okay, so the iOS is currently downloading. This will take maybe five minutes. Meanwhile, we have the what's new in Xcode. So we can go and follow the tutorial. So continue. And then, well, that's pretty much it. So we will wait for the simulator to download and we'll keep going. All right, so everything has been installed. I will close this. If we go back to the steps, what we need next is to make sure that the command line tool is actually selected. Otherwise you will have some problem. In Xcode, you will click this settings. You will go in location and verify that this is selected. Great, so now you can close. We can start by running Flutter Doctor. And now you should see inside the terminal that Xcode is now missing one thing and is the cocoa pod. So we will fix this right now because it's the next step. Okay, so to install the Cocoa Pod, you will need to use this thing. So we'll go inside the terminal and we'll paste the sudo gem install Cocoa Pods like this. Then you will need to put your password. And don't worry because this will take maybe three minutes before you can see anything on the terminal. But after this, it will either work or you will have an error installing Cocoa Pod. If you have the error, I will show you what to do next. But for now, let's just wait for this to complete. Okay, so you can see that I have the error installing CocoaPod and we need the latest version, blah, blah, blah. The problem is the Ruby version is too old and we need a bigger Ruby version in order to have the CocoaPod. But if you don't have any errors and it works for you, then you can move to the next step. Otherwise, together, we will fix this thing right now. So first thing first is to install Homebrew. So you can click on this and this is the installation. So you can copy this. And a homebrew is just a package manager. For example, if you want to download Ruby or Cocoa Pods. So this is why we need to download this. So you will copy the installation line or inside my step-by-step, -step, I have the command line also. You will go inside your terminal and you will paste this and you will press enter. Now, because it's a pseudo line, you will need to put your password. After this, you will need to press enter again to install everything they said. Okay, perfect. So now homebrew is asking us to do three comments, echo, echo, and eval. So all the comments are in the website also. So let's run them. So I will copy Copy this one and paste it under, press enter. Next, I will copy this one, copy, paste, enter. And finally, I will use this one, copy and save. Okay, so this has created some sort of path between your computer and homebrew. So you can go inside your finder. And if you go inside MacBook, you will find a Z profile. So I, if I double click on it, you will see that this has been added automatically. Great, so we can close this and we can close our documents also. Another cool thing about the Z profile and all those things is if you go up, you will find this little image. This is the order of execution of all those files. So you can see that the ZSHN is run first. And after we have the Z profile, ZSSHR. Anyway, if you want to learn more, you can read what is on the image. The next thing we need is to upgrade Ruby. Because if you remember, in order to install the Cocoa Pods, we need to upgrade our Ruby. But we will install Ruby by using the brew command. We'll say brew install Ruby and press enter. Once it's finished, we need to add this export inside the ZSHRC. And, and we need to do this to have the new Ruby version as default. Because right now, if you write Ruby V like this, you will see that we have the old version, the 2.6. But we need to override this and make the default version the newest one. So for this, I will copy this line of code, the echo export path. We will copy this and press enter. So if you go inside your files, you will see inside the MacBook, we should have this file. And inside, we have the export of the Ruby path. Great, so we can close all the files again. Now, if we do Ruby V once again, we have the old version. So we need to close the terminal, reopen the terminal and write Ruby V once again. Now you can see that we have the new version 3.3.5. So in order to install the Cocoa Pod, we will install them with Brew. So what we will do first is sudo gem uninstall the current Cocoa Pods, press enter, and then you will put your password and enter. And most likely you will have this gem Cocoa Pod is not installed, but if they were installed, now they will be uninstalled. Great, so with this, we are able to install the Cocoa Pod, but with the Brew command. So you will say Brew install Cocoa Pods press enter. So we have updated Ruby and then we are updating our Cocoa Pods. So at this point, we are ready to write the command flutter doctor and press enter. And now I can see that in my Xcode, I have some sort of problems. So they ask us to do two sudo command. I will run the first one. 
like this. And then I will put my password once again. And then I will run the second one. This one and come in, press enter. Good, so let's run Flutter Doctor just to see if everything has been fixed. Okay, so that's good. You can see that the Xcode is now green and everything worked fine. The next step will be to install Android Studio. So let's go inside the step-by-step -step installation. We will go and install Android Studio. So I will click on this and I will say, download Android Studio. I will read everything, say yes, and download with my Apple chip. But if you have the Intel, click on the other one. So this will take maybe one or five minutes to download. Okay, so I will click on download and I will click on Android Studio. Now we'll drag it inside my applications. And so I can close this and I can eject Android Studio and take the application inside the launchpad. So I will click on Android Studio. I will click open and I will say don't send. Next, I will use the standard installation. Next, next, we need to agree the licenses. I will say accept, finish, and now it's downloading. Next, you click on finish. We will go back inside the tutorial installation and we need to add the Android SDK command line tool latest. So I will go back inside Android Studio, click there and press setting. Inside language and framework, you will click on Android SDK and then SDK tool. And then you will select the Android SDK command line tool latest and press OK. OK, and then you will press finish. So now if you go inside the terminal and you press Flutter Doctor and press enter, now we have only one thing missing and it's the Android licenses. So you need to run Flutter Doctor Android license. So say Flutter Doctor Android licenses and you press enter. Great, so you will say yes, enter, yes, enter, yes, enter, yes, enter, yes, enter. You can write once again Flutter Doctor and enjoy all the little green check marks. But we still have a lot of things to do and one of them is to actually launch the application from Android Studio. And the second one is to install VS Code and run Flutter application on it. You will see that when you code with Flutter, VS Code is much better in my opinion. It just goes much faster. So I will show you how to install it. And after this, we will go through the last step, the matrix. I have some crazy good tip for you. All right, so let's go run our application with Android Studio. You will open Android Studio and then what you will do is you will click Android Studio settings. Then you will go inside plugins and you will write Flutter. You will select install and I need to restart the IDE. So I will say restart IDE, restart. And personally, I have one way that I like to create my projects. And this is one tip from the matrix, the best way to start a Flutter project. And the best way to do it is to run this command inside the terminal. Because as the text says, this will set up everything for your application when you will want to publish it online. So you will save a lot of time if you run this command to create your projects. So we will do this. I will copy this and then I will go inside my finder, inside MacBook, inside development. I will create a new folder. This one will be called projects and this will be all my Flutter projects which is inside development also. So we can close this and go inside the terminal to create our Flutter project. I will say CD and it will be development, enter, and then I will say CD projects, enter. So now I am inside my projects from the development folder and I will paste my command flutter create. So what you have to change right there is the name of your application. By example, this is the name of your app. I will call it Flutter Test. And then you need to change your domain. So you will just need to put, by example, I will say Flutter Map because this is my website, but in reverse. This will create the project Flutter Test and will set up all the thing related to your website already inside the application. So you will save time when you will publish your apps. And then you just press enter. Okay, so I will do it again. It's just because this name is uh, not available at all. So we'll say Flutter Test 22 and press enter. Perfect. So this will create my Flutter test 22. And with this, we can go back inside Android Studio and say, open a project, go inside documents, uh, inside development, projects, and click our Flutter test 22, press open. I will say, I trust this project from this development project. I will say trust project. And now the last step is to run this on our simulator. So if you press command space and you write simulator, you should see it right there like this, because this has been downloaded with Xcode. But if you forget to add it, you can go inside the Xcode and press Windows, Device and Simulator. And inside Simulators, you will see everything you have and you can add one if you need. Perfect, so I will close this. And now what we need to do is to run on the simulator 
or actual Flutter application. So what you need to verify is you need to click there and select the actual iPhone 16 plus or the simulator you created. So for me, it's the iPhone 16 plus. After you will go inside the library in the main.dart and this is the start of your project. So you can click by example, the little play button and this will run the main.dart on the iPhone 16 plus. You can see that the application is currently launching. It's running Xcode build and maybe in 10 seconds, the application will launch. Perfect, so we have our application and it's ready, it's working. So you could code on Android Studio and it will work. But now what we'll do is we will continue and we'll set up Flutter with VS Code. So you will be able to run your app on VS Code instead. So I will click on install Visual Studio Code. I will say download for Mac. I will wait for the download. And now I will click on it like this, click open. And now we have Visual Studio. The next step is to go inside the extension, write Flutter and click install. Perfect, you can go back inside the Explorer and open a folder. We will open the same project, development, project, and the Flutter test 22 open. And I will say, trust the author from the projects. Yes, I trust the author. And now we need to run this on the simulator. So we'll go back inside Android Studio and we will stop our application with this little button. I will close Android Studio and this little tab also. And now inside Visual Studio Code, we will go inside the library main.dart. This again is where our application starts. At the bottom, you can see that we have our iPhone 16 plus connected. You just need to make sure that your iPhone is connected at the bottom. And then if you are inside the main.dart, you will see the little play button. So you can click on it and this will launch the application on this simulator from Visual Studio Code. Great, so the application has launched also. So you can code either on Android Studio or Visual Studio Code. But I need to show you one last thing and it's inside the section, the matrix. It's called the autoconst. I will show you how to add this inside Visual Studio so you don't have to manually type const every time, which is very boring. So let's go inside Visual Studio Code. You will tap Command Shift P and you will write settings.json and you will open the workspace settings inside the .vs code settings.json, you can add the line I told you. So let me show you the difference. First, if I go inside the main and I remove this thing and I save, you see that nothing happened and I need to say quick fix, add the const. It's very boring. So instead I will remove this and I will go inside the setting.json. I will add this little line of code, the editor code action on save, and I will paste it inside. So now every time we save, this will fix everything. So it will add all the const. So I will save and I will go back inside the main. And now inside the main, if I save, you see that the const has been added automatically. And so this will save you a lot of time. And so if you want, I have a one hour course on YouTube for free, or you can get the premium Flutter course. So that's about it. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.